friendship, which has always stayed with me. And he said, of all of the work that scholars do in our attempt to create new knowledge, perhaps 10% of that ends up being truly valuable to other scholars and people build on it and it, it, it joins the canon and it is valued and is wonderful. And then perhaps it might be as much as 80% while worthwhile in its own right, let's put it this way, it doesn't get cited that much in the future. Maybe it helps someone get tenure, get promoted, maybe it was the beginning of other ideas, but it falls into another category. And then he said there's another 10% in the middle which may not end up in the canon and people may not celebrate 50 years from now, but at least it raises interesting arguments, uh, raises interesting questions uh, that are of service to others. Though the conclusions themselves, uh, some of the concepts may not be of the highest order. If I'm really lucky today, I won't be in the 80%, <laughs> maybe I'll be in the middle 10%. But I'm here to start an argument. Uh, the title of my presentation is The Counter Coriolis Effect Contemporary Literary Girls in a Shrinking World. Um, I, I must confess that sometimes the, the scholarly process produces an idea that's somewhat amorphous and hard to get your hands on, but you know that it might have promise. It seems interesting and you want to think about it some more. And then perhaps the worst thing that can happen to you is you come up with a wonderful title for it. And you just fall in love with the title. And you say, I can't let this go. I have to keep going. And I have to confess, I'm not sure that I should have kept going. But I so fell in love with the title that you have to suck with the results of it. Uh, if Tom Friedman and others are correct, uh, for much of the world today, uh, the defining reality, at least for the next few decades, uh, will be globalization uh, in all its forms, economic, political, cultural, social, etc. Uh, the world is shrinking. The question arises then, what, if any, might be the journalistic dimensions of this phenomenon? Is there a journalistic aspect to globalization? And if, at least for the sake of argument, one posits that such a dimension exists, that there is a journalistic dimension, uh, what then would be the literary journalism element or elements of the journalistic dimension? In line with this axis of inquiry, this is this work in progress, and it's very, very much a work in progress, um, attempts to consider the literary journalism form in a deliberately geopolitical perspective. And as far as I know, at least for contemporary literary journalism, I don't know if many other scholars doing this. Because literary journalism most certainly has had has the potential for profound, long-term, even world historical effects. I don't think most any of us would disagree with that, simply because there are an awful lot of examples of it. Um, I would offer John Hersey's Hiroshima and the rise of the Band of Bomb movement in the United States and in the UK and elsewhere. Uh, perhaps most recently, uh, Seymour Hersey's dispatches from Abu Ghraib in, in Iraq and the changing tide of public opinion about what I would call the American misadventure in Iraq. Um, so journal literary journalism, I'm positing, uh, can also both shape and reflect larger social, cultural, and political currents um, at the regional level, at the national level, and perhaps even at the international level. 